In the escalating global chip war, Beijing has just made its most audacious move yet. A move that didn't just change the rules of the game, but flipped the entire board. Without any public warning, Chinese regulators issued a stunning directive to the nation's technology titans. Giants like ByteDance, the force behind TikTok, Alibaba, the e-commerce and cloud behemoth, and Tencent, the sprawling digital empire, were all given the same stark order. Immediately halt all planned purchases of NVIDIA's H20 chips. This wasn't a negotiation or a gentle suggestion from a government agency. It was a top-down command, delivered with chilling precision, signaling a dramatic and coordinated escalation in the battle for technological supremacy. The message was unambiguous. China would no longer play by Washington's rules. The news hit the global markets like a seismic shock. On Wall Street, the tremors were felt instantly. The directive didn't just jolt U.S. chipmakers, it sent a wave of panic through a sector that had been riding high on the AI boom. For months, investors had largely discounted the geopolitical risks, believing the insatiable demand for AI hardware would override any political friction. This order shattered that illusion. Suddenly, the carefully constructed narratives around unstoppable growth began to crumble. Washington, which believed it held all the cards through its powerful export controls, was caught completely off guard. The strategy had been to limit China's access to the most advanced chips, forcing American companies like NVIDIA to create less powerful, export-compliant versions specifically for the Chinese market. The H20 was the result of that strategy, but Beijing flipped the script with breathtaking simplicity. By rejecting the very chips designed to placate U.S. regulators, China sent a powerful message. It was a declaration that it would rather risk slowing its own AI development in the short term than accept a position of permanent technological inferiority. The move signals a massive pivot towards domestic alternatives, pouring resources into homegrown champions like Huawei and its Ascend series of AI accelerators. The logic is brutal. If the US is going to restrict access to the best technology, China will simply refuse to buy the compromised versions and accelerate the creation of its own. The financial stakes are staggering. China isn't just another market. It is the world's largest and most critical buyer of advanced semiconductors. For a company like NVIDIA, it's the engine room of its global growth. Last fiscal year alone, NVIDIA booked over $17 billion in revenue from China, accounting for a massive 13% of its total sales. This isn't just profit, it's the capital that funds the next generation of research and development, keeping NVIDIA ahead of its competitors. Stripping that revenue stream out of the equation doesn't just trim the balance sheet, it exposes a fundamental vulnerability at the heart of the AI revolution's undisputed champion, and raises a terrifying question for the entire industry. What happens when your biggest customer decides to become your biggest competitor? The Trump administration framed its deal with NVIDIA and AMD as a national security win. The policy was presented as a clever piece of statecraft, allow limited monitored sales of high-performance chips to China, but skim a significant 15% of all revenue directly into the U.S. Treasury. On paper, it seemed like a masterstroke. The U.S. would profit from its technological dominance while simultaneously funding its own strategic initiatives. For every billion dollars in sales, 150 million would be redirected to American coffers. The logic was that the U.S. could have its cake and eat it too, maintaining a leash on China's tech growth while benefiting financially. But Beijing saw the move not as a compromise but as an economic shakedown. State-controlled media and government officials began a coordinated campaign, reframing the narrative. They told domestic firms that every dollar spent on U.S. chips was a dollar directly funding a rival government's treasury, a government actively working to contain China's rise. The message was simple and powerful. Buying American was now an act of financing your own competitor. This put Chinese tech giants in an impossible position, caught between their immediate need for cutting-edge hardware and the clear political winds blowing from the capital. Buying NVIDIA became politically toxic. The risk was no longer just about supply chain disruption, it was about political survival. Corporate leaders understood that being seen as unpatriotic could have severe consequences, far outweighing the benefits of using slightly superior foreign components. Markets reacted instantly, investors, sensing a seismic shift, moved their capital. Stock and SMIC, China's premier semiconductor foundry, jumped 5% in a single day. The bet was clear. Demand previously flowing to NVIDIA and AMD would be forcibly redirected to local fabs, regardless of their current technological capabilities. Meanwhile, 
Nvidia and AMD slid as investors grasped the real lesson. America's revenue skim only worked while China played along. The policy's foundation was built on the assumption of Chinese compliance, an assumption that evaporated overnight. The potential loss wasn't just the 15% tax, it was the entirety of the vast Chinese market, a critical engine of growth for both companies. Behind closed doors, the pressure intensified. Chinese regulators began pressing executives with a pointed question. Why choose NVIDIA over a domestic champion like Huawei? That single question, posed in quiet boardrooms and official meetings, spooked buyers more than any public decree. It was a clear directive disguised as a query. In response, some of the largest tech firms in the country began quietly trimming their orders and revising their procurement roadmaps, acting long before any formal ban was ever announced. This preemptive retreat demonstrated the immense power of informal state guidance, creating a chilling effect that cascaded through the global tech ecosystem. Bloomberg reports U.S. equipment makers, Applied Materials, LAM Research, KLA, now face billions in jeopardized sales as Chinese fabs reorder procurement. Meanwhile, Beijing boosted its semiconductor fund by $47 billion, surpassing what Washington has dispersed under the CHIPS Act. Goldman Sachs estimates a full block on NVIDIA's H20 could shave 0.3 points off U.S. GDP growth in 2025 a serious hit in a fragile economy already running a $291 billion July deficit. The more Washington leans on tariffs, the faster Beijing speeds up self-reliance. Every canceled order costs U.S. firms revenue, and time, the one resource technology can't replace. NVIDIA insists the H20 isn't a military product and contains no hidden backdoors. But Beijing's motive isn't just security, suspicion is leverage, starving U.S. suppliers while fueling domestic champions. Trade data underscores the pivot. In July, China's imports climbed 4%, while exports to the U.S. plunged double digits. Shipments to Southeast Asia jumped 13%, Africa 21%, Europe 7%. What Washington calls decoupling increasingly looks like China's rebalancing. Four months in, even Trump ally Scott Besant admitted tariffs hit U.S. importers, not Chinese exporters. Reuters says 446 U.S. firms have filed for bankruptcy this year, the highest in 15 years. Exporters aren't absorbing 30% losses to keep access, they're walking away. Meanwhile, July's deficit dwarfed tariff receipts. That 15% chip tax looks less like strategy, more like a patch on a widening hole. The ambition to reshore critical industries runs into the unyielding wall of structural dependencies. The numbers are stark. While the U.S. has some rare earth mineral deposits, the real choke point is processing. China controls nearly 90% of the global capacity to refine these elements into the high-purity metals and magnets essential for modern technology. Think neodymium for EV motors, dysprosium for wind turbines, and gallium for advanced semiconductors. This isn't just a supply chain, it's a strategic stranglehold. Beijing doesn't need a dramatic embargo, it can simply tighten the tap, raising friction and costs across the entire global tech ecosystem. But the dependencies cut both ways, creating a fragile interconnected web. The single most critical step in modern chip making is photolithography, the process of etching unimaginably small circuits onto silicon wafers. And here, the choke point isn't in China but in the Netherlands. One company, ASML, holds a complete monopoly on the extreme ultraviolet or EUV machines required to produce the world's most advanced chips. These machines, costing over $200 million each, are already banned from export to China, forcing Beijing to pour tens of billions into developing its own lithography technology. A third often overlooked dependency lies in the final step, advanced packaging. This is where individual chips are assembled, tested, and packaged into the final product. For decades, this work has been outsourced to Asia, with China building up immense expertise and capacity. As chips become more complex using chiplet designs, advanced packaging is no longer an afterthought but a critical performance bottleneck, providing yet another lever of influence. It's within this intricate landscape that the GPU restrictions land. Before April's rules, Chinese demand for high-end AI chips was projected at 1.5 million units, a market worth over $20 billion. Cutting off this demand creates a vacuum, a golden opportunity for domestic champions like Huawei. Their Ascend chips are now aggressively marketed as the patriotic choice, guaranteeing them a massive, captive market to refine their technology and scale production. 
Every sale lost by NVIDIA is direct fuel for a state-backed competitor. The irony is potent, policies designed to slow Beijing's technological ascent are, in some ways, forcing it to run faster. To compensate for lost Chinese revenue, U.S. firms are forced to hike domestic prices, eroding their competitiveness at home. Meanwhile, Chinese companies, insulated by domestic demand and state support, scale their own production, gaining market share not just within China, but increasingly in emerging markets. The strategy to contain is inadvertently becoming a strategy to incubate. China's production of industrial robots leapt 52% in April to 71,000 units. Pair that with rapid AI adoption and a clear pattern emerges. While Washington taxes its own firms, Beijing automates slashes costs and creates new chip demand. The numbers are unavoidable, bankruptcies climbing, deficits widening, global supply chains bending toward China, innovation runs on revenue, starve NVIDIA and AMD of their biggest growth market, and China's pace accelerates. Washington believed taxing chip sales would cement dominance. Instead, it revealed dependence. By trying to control technology flows, it reminded Beijing how powerful its market leverage really is. And Beijing responded with one command, stop buying US chips. The result, tariffs became subsidies for China's rise, restrictions, incentives to innovate at home. A single directive damaged US leverage more than months of trade war threats. So who really folded? Basant? or the strategy itself.